Only Yesterday is a 1991 Studio Ghibli movie by Izao Takahara? The movie's about this one woman revisiting vignettes from her childhood, and one of them was about her struggling to get one concept in math, where you divide fractions by other fractions. It starts with her as, as a grown-up recounting how people who got the concept at, right away as a kid seem to have life go easier for them because they're able to take these arbitrary rules and just be okay with them. They don't have to question why. Here's the clip. Wow, what a scene. <laughs> After I watched that, then I had to go back over it a couple times because I had to figure out what was going on. I, I pulled out my bullet journal and I had to go through the pa through uh, just on a page trying to figure out what was going on, just like writing stuff down. And yeah, <laughs> in the movie, the woman says that people who understand division by fractions right away seem to have life go easier for them because they're able to just accept these arbitrary rules and not ask questions, not ask, like, why is it this way? But, like, why is it that way? <laughs> what's going on? So, yeah, just try and figure out for yourself. Figure out what's going on, where the miscommunication is happening for the main character, and how would you draw the correct answer by dividing apples? So I'm going to go over my process, but I hope that everyone watching is able to take some time, maybe a day or two, to try and figure it out on their own to answer those three questions that I asked. Because answering those gives you a, a glimpse of what real math is like. Real math is about the process of understanding and finding like shortcuts to use. But like when we're learning math in school, like with the main character, we're just handed these shortcuts and told to use them. And I'll probably have some videos to link to that are similar to this. And before I like try to do this math problem. I thought the first real math I did was in college where I was trying to solve a Bracax programming challenge and I was trying to find a good way to iterate through all of them and that was like super duper cool and super mathy and I really liked it. And I also learned about some uh, early math and stuff while I was making a video game about music and harmonics and stuff to do with like Euclid and early math and you. Yeah. But after doing this problem I remembered that I did some math after high school about logarithms and I was rediscovering the process of how they came up with some shortcuts and just doing this remind me of that and oh, it's, oh, it's so so interesting <laughs> so great so hopefully I'll make some videos about those in the future also if you have trouble with like figuring it out or if you did have trouble figuring it out, then don't worry about it. It's it's definitely difficult, especially if you're not used to this process of math. And any progress is progress. And once you uh, once you start to get it, then you'll get better and better. And it's actually kind of fun. And like this one massive interwoven puzzle that's just part of the universe for people to figure out. And yeah, this is the page of my cousin Renee, who I <laughs> told her to come out and try it right after I w finished figuring it out myself. And yeah, we went through the process together, and she was trying, she was struggling and having fun with it. And afterwards, she found it super cool. So shout out to Renee. <laughs> this is the first notebook where I was trying to figure out the problem. So it always helps to start out with just saying what the problem is. Why divide a fraction by a fraction? That was the question the character asked. Two thirds divided by one quarter, or what the character was doing was splitting two thirds into quarters, or two thirds divided by four. So this is what the character was doing, taking two thirds and dividing the two thirds here into four pieces. One sixth was the answer. I just thought about it for a while and I came up with, if that's asking what happens if you take two thirds and split into quarters, then what would divide by one quarter be asking? And I figured it would be asking, what if two thirds was already one quarter, then what's the whole amount? So yeah, 
that's what I wrote here. And, and then I was trying to figure some stuff out. It's defining fractions by fractions by fractions by fractions. And I'm not sure if it's totally clear what's going on. So, this was a later page where I was trying to go through what, what happens when you divide some, divide one by four, you get a quarter, and then if you double it, you get this, double it again, and then double it again, and double it again. Or you make the divisor half as big, the thing dividing it half as big, and that's the result. So this is the point where it stays the same, and then it's there, 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 there. Yeah. So it keeps getting bigger each time that you make this number here half as big, and the result doubles. And then you could go in between and find out, like, is it like a continuous thing or does it only happen at these points? And it makes sense that you could do this with like any numbers and it would be a continuous, continuous like transition from there to there. So you can imagine that there's the gaps are filled in. And here, what's going on here? <laughs> um, oh yeah, so here it was just taking the observation that one divide by one divide by something is equal to just like the last number there, those are the same. So you can just fill those in. And another way of writing it is that you can imply that there's a it's divided by one there. That's already like always implied with numbers that don't have a divisor. And then you could figure out like, well what if that what if this number wasn't one without would it work the same way? And I'm sure you can do some math and figure out, yeah, it does work that way. Um, but maybe another time. <laughs> that's a that's an interesting thing I might look into later. And then here was another thing. So it was just taking this number and doubling or, or dividing the divisor. Is it numerator and denominator? I don't. I don't know. I'll check it out. So here is just taking the denominator and making it half as large each time and seeing what happens to the number. So here it goes from 24 to 12 to 6 to 3. And then I was experimenting just like messing around with just going from 1 third to 2 third to 3 to 3 thirds to 4 thirds. But that's a linear progress from, progression from this one here. But from here, then it's doubling each time. Uh, so what you end up with is, uh, so you can, another way to write this would be like 24 divided by 2, and those would be in brackets, or 12 divided by, or yeah, yeah 24 divided by 2, or 24 divided by 2 divided by 2, and so on. So here I was just doing that, so, is that in focus? So here, it was just 2 divided by 3 divided by 2. And that gives you 4 over 3. And then you can do the same thing again. So 2 divided by 3 divided by 2 divided by 2, or just divided by 4. And that gives you 8 over 3. And with that, then... So with that, you can see that 2 divided by x divided by y is equal to y times, oh wait, no, that shouldn't be an x, because of math. So with that pattern, you can see that some number divided by that, divided by x divided by y is equal to y times original number divided by x. So yeah, because 2 times 4 is equal to 8. And that's like another shortcut we have, so we have <laughs> thinking of numbers, or thinking of letters is so difficult with these. So yeah, here's just, here it's just the same thing written out with letters, so it's totally generic. So yeah, this is a shortcut we can use now, and this is also a shortcut we can use. So this was the shortcut I just showed right here. 
it's the same one. And here, it's just saying that a divided by b is equal to a times something, or 1 divided by b. So that's pretty, that should make sense, because when you multiply something, then you just take the numerator and multiply it, and yeah. And, and it's kind of interesting, because the main character, she was told to just like do all this together without understanding these two more basic shortcuts. And these are really useful, like, I didn't like formally learn these until like later in college and stuff, where I it was like super duper helpful to know these more basic like fundamental <laughs> rules of math. So I'll just go over what we were doing with the question so that we understand it pretty well using these rules. So our goal is to take two thirds and divide by one quarter. Wow, I'm drawing a blank. So two thirds divided by one over four. Okay, so here we have something divided by something else. So we're going to use this rule to say that a divided by something is equal to a times one over that. So we're going to, we're going to have this rule here, and we're going to do two thirds times one over one over four. So a was two thirds, and b was one quarter, and we just set, put in the equivalent thing. And then we're going to use this other rule we have for this part. So we're going to do so we're going to do two thirds times four over one. So there we just took this thing, like here. So it was one divided by one divided by four. And then we brought it so that it was 4 divided by 1. And that's just another way of writing 4. So, so we're using the two shortcuts we have here to get to the process of 2 thirds times 4 would be giving us the answer. Wow, that's a bit complicated, but if you understand these rules, then it's super duper helpful in understanding why things work and helps you and going through this process helps you understand the process of like how math is made and how to figure things out and I think that's lovely. So yeah that's the video. I hope you liked it. Follow me on Twitter, play my video games. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.